Okay, so uh, today we will have the 20 minutes for teachings. And after that, we will have the greets. Okay, so uh, last week uh, I introduced uh, how important of the uh, viscosity equations. Uh, like the formula showing here, you can see the shear stress is proportional to the dynamic viscosity and uh, multiplied by the velocity gradient. And then we do very quickly exercise. And the exercise, the problem is Poisson flow. And uh, for the Poisson flow, you can see the velocity profile as a function of the radius directions is parabola. So uh, this is a very uh, important exercise because the velocity profile is nonlinear. In case the velocity gradient will change at different point, right? Because the velocity gradient is equal to the slope as I plot some lines, red lines, different location, you, you will have a different slope along the velocity profile. And the different slope will have a different velocity gradient. And uh, the fluid material total did, uh, is totally didn't change, right? So the dynamic viscosity is constant. So at a different point, you will have a different shear stress due to the variations of the uh, velocity gradients. So this is a very uh, important physical properties. If we follow, we follow the viscosity equations on the right hand side, okay? And then we make the plot, we make the uh, scatter plot and the y axis is fixed, the shear stress, and the x axis is the velocity gradient. So we actually know the line, the slope of the line is viscosity, right? Follow the equation showing here. And uh, this line curls over the zero point. So we call that the fluid is Newton fluid. So in other words, we will have a non-Newton fluid. So this is a very important certain definition between Newton and the non-Newtons. You can do laboratory experiment and you have the shear stress and you have the AKS velocity gradient and then you can plot the line. If this line is linear line and uh, also cross over the zero point, that means there is no intercept, right? So we call that the fluid is Newton, Newtonian fluid. So what is non-Newton? So you can see, uh, the gray line showing here is Newton fluid, right? So totally we have the three types fluid related to non-Newton fluid. So as you see the first, we call that the, sh the shear thinning. What are the meanings? If you focus the sh shear thinning line here, and you do the slope, you can do many, many slope. Maybe uh, at this point, okay, at this point. And then we can plot the tangent line. We can plot one tangent line. And I can pick up another point, red dot here. And I also plot the tangent line. Okay, so if you 
make a comparison between the black line and the red line, you certainly know the slope is decreased, right? The slope of the line is decreased. And uh, if you based on the uh, viscosity equation, you know the slope is equal to dynamic viscosity. So for a sh sh shear thinnings, you know the slope will decrease when the velocity gradient increase, right? So start from the left to the right, the shear thinning indicate the dynamic viscosity mu will decrease if the velocity velocity gradient increase, right? And uh, if we know that the uh, dynamic viscosity decrease, that indicates the fluid is much easy to flow, right? Because dynamic viscosity decrease, and the fluid is easy to flow. Okay, so I just uh, highlight some uh, material in our life. So usually uh, the ketchup, as I show in here, the ketchup is the shear thinning. Because the ketchup, if you don't mix the ketchup with the water, the ketchup will stain there, right? If we mix the water and the ketchup will flow. Okay. And when you mix the water, so maybe the velocity gradient increase and the changes, so the dynamic viscosity of the ketchup will decrease. Okay, so in our life, uh, the ketchup is one of the non-Newton fluid, and uh, but uh, based on its property, we call that the shear thinning. We call that the shear thinning, as I mentioned here. So in opposite, we can call that the another non-Newton fluid. We call that the sh the shear thinking. And again, if you 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 make the tangent along the blue line, you make the tangent line, and then you plot the blue dot, and you also plot the red dot in here, and then take the tangent line, and then you actually know that the the slope will increase, right? So the slope increase, that indicates the dynamic viscosity increase when velocity gradient increase also. Okay, that means the fluid, when the fluid dynamic viscosity increase and then the fluid is more difficult to flow. Okay, so I also highlight uh, another example in our life, the starch. Okay, the starch is like the, the paper, right? And it will flow and fly in airs. But you mix the water together and the starch will become a little bit similar to the solid, okay? So become a solid, so it's very difficult to flow. That indicates the dynamic viscosity also increase. Okay, so that's why in, kind, uh, in this kind of the material, we call that the shear thickening. That's because the dynamic viscosity increase when the velocity gradient increase, okay? And final one, we call that the Bingham fluid. And the Bingham fluid, you see the line, the line showing here is also linear line. But if you compare this line with the Newton fluid line, there is only one difference is the intercept, okay? 
There is only one difference is the intercept. So you can see the point here. So in a Bingham fluid, if the shear stress is lower than a certain threshold of the shear stress, the fluid behavior is similar to the solid material. If the material overcome the shear stress, and then the fluid, the material property will go back to the fluid behavior. Okay, so the being have fru uh, fluid, if the shear stress is not is not large enough, the behavior of the fluid is similar to the solid material. But but if the shear stress overcome and reach the certain threshold, and then the material will go back to follow the fluid behavior. Okay. So uh, this is very important uh, uh, f for the uh, fluid properties. OK, 這個不知道為什麼這個通常我們在那個master就是硕士的interview的時候我們問學生這個問題八成的學生都答不出來說怎麼去分 Newton flow 跟 non Newton flow 很奇怪, 但這個idea很簡單, 對不對? 怎麼去區分這個Newton flow 跟 non-Newton flow 那我這邊highlight了幾個很重要的material 就是讓你可以去思考 在生活中其實這些fluid 它就是non-Newton fluid 那你就比較容易記得說原來有這個特性在 那最重要的就是沒有viscosity equation 你很難去定義是牛頓流體還是非牛頓流體 OK So I just uh, highlight again the viscosity, how important of the viscosity equations. Okay, so keep in mind for a uh, certain definition show in this slide, how can we distinguish the Newton and the non-Newton fluid? Okay, so the next I move to another famous uh, flow. We call that the Kurt flow, okay? So the Kuerter flow, if you based on the figure show on the slide, you see the significant difference compared to Poisson flow is the velocity functions. You can see uh, the velocity fun profile showing here is linear. It's linear, not the is not the parabola or hyperbola profile is a linear profile so the linear profile that means if you compute the velocity gradient as I show in here if dv dy why dy because right now our coordinate is along the y directions the dv dy is always constant right because our velocity profile is the linear so the linear the gradient along the y axis didn't change. That's why the velocity function is linear profile. And for this problem, under plate is stationary. That means the under the bottom plate didn't move and like fixed in layers. And the upper is the moving wall. So the upper plate can move with a certain velocity, upper plate can move with a certain velocity here. And uh, the thickness between two plates, we call that the capital H in here. So uh, this is uh, uh, in our life, usually uh, the friction property is uh, difficult to overcome. So the plate cannot move. So we will mix some 
Replications, replications as as I show in here, 润滑剂 between two plate, and then the upper plate can move. So this kind of property we call that the coolant flow. So the idea we still start from the the viscosity equations as I show in here, because the velocity gradient here. Is the constant values, so finally our shear stress is equal to the dynamic viscosity multiplied the ratios between the velocity and the thickness. Okay, that means at any point along the y directions, their shear stress. Is the same because anywhere along y directions, the velocity t velocity gradient didn't change, right? The velocity didn't change, and the material is the same. So the dynamic viscosity also the same. So at any point along the y directions, the shear stress are the same. Okay, so it's a total difference compared to Poisson's flow. Poisson flow will at a different location will have a different shear stress and the velocity, but in coolant flow, all locations are the same shear stress and the same velocity gradient. Okay, so that's uh that's why we introduce two flow, but the two flow with the different velocity profile will have a different Physical phenomena. Okay, so it's very easy to understand. So we have the quick exercise. As you see, this is the same uh, figures compared pre, uh, to the previous slide. So we have the edge, and we have the moving velocities, and then you call the exercise. What are the questions? The velocity of the fluid at the y equal to h. Is equal to the velocity of the moving wall. V zero is equal to the ten centimeter per second. So we just write down the information. So V zero is equal to ten centimeter per second, and then that's equal to the zero point one uh meters per second, right? Okay, and then the high, a high of the duplication, <coughs> the high is the five millimeters. It's the five millimeters. So we write down the information. The high is indicated the thickness, right? The thickness of the uh, duplications. So it's the five millimeters, and then we convert to the meters. So it's equal to zero point zero. Zero five meter. Okay, and then the dynamic viscosity here of the duplication mu is point zero three six. Okay, so write down the information. The mu is equal to zero point zero three six newton multiplied the seconds. And the per meter square. So, what is the shear stress at the location of the moving wall? So the upper plate is a moving wall. So that means the the question is, we need to know the tau. Tau is the shear stress. Okay, we need to know the tau at. The y equal to h, right? Because the questions require we answer the shear stress at the moving wall. Okay, so uh, just based on the dynamic uh viscosity equations, we know that the tau is equal to the mu and the v zero divided h, right? So. No matter 
sorry, no matter where is the y location, okay? So uh, you can compute it by yourself. So in our questions, we don't need to care the y location because anywhere at the any y location, the shear stress is the same for the quarter flow. So this problem is for the quarter flow. So you can do uh, the the answers by yourself. So the zero point one meter per second and the zero uh, point zero zero five meters thickness, and then you can calculate the final solutions. So the zero point zero three six multiply zero point one divided zero point zero zero five. So it's equal to the zero point seven two newtons per meter square. Okay. Even though this exercise is quite simple ideas, but I would like to highlight at all point in quarter flow for the shear stress is constant. So it's a very important uh, difference compared to Poissula flow. Okay, so uh, maybe already uh, we, the time is, uh, is rich, so we, we will move to the uh, quiz. Okay, so I stop.